Hi, everybody. I am Maria Luisa Rendon. Um, I am from Honduras, Central America. There I work at the National University in my country. And uh, I work at the capital city, Tegucigalpa. I am uh, the youngest of three. I have an older brother, uh, an older sister, uh, and I live in uh, the second biggest city of my country, in San Pedro Sula. And my parents also live there in San Pedro Sula. But because of my work, I have to live in the capital city. So as you can see in the map, where is Honduras? Where is it located? Honduras is located in Central America, close to the south border of Mexico. So you have all Central America countries, starting with Guatemala, Honduras in the center, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica. So these five countries belong to Central America. Honduras is at the heart of Central America. Our borders uh, we have at the north, the Caribbean Sea. So we have at the north coast of my country, beautiful beaches and uh, a lot of sun and fun all year. And of our west border, we have Guatemala and El Salvador. At the east border, we have Nicaragua, another Central American country. And of the south, we share the Pacific Ocean and Gulf with uh, El Salvador and Nicaragua. So that's uh, Honduras is located in the heart of Central America, and Central America is in the heart between North America and South America. So the capital of Honduras is Tegucigalpa. It's in the center of, of the country. And uh, the meaning of Teucigalpa is mine of silver, because in the past Teucigalpa were, were composed by mines. The second city uh, of Honduras is San Pedro Sula. It's an industrial city. This is not usual in Central America. These five countries usually just have one big city and everything is rural area. But in Honduras, it's a little different. We just don't have one big city. We have a second big city. San Pedro Sula, that I was born in the city and all my family lives in this second city. We are not a federation like here, like in the United States or Mexico. In my country, it's different. It's not a federation. We are in just a unitary, a system unitary state. We have 18 departments. At the north coast, we have Cortes. And uh, close to the, the north coast of Cortes, we have San Pedro Sula. And as you can see in the map, at the center of the country is Teucigalpa the capital city. You drive like six hours, you can be at the capital city of El Salvador, maybe less driving. And also we have very close from Tegucigalpa, like five or six hours driving or by bus, you have Nicaragua, the capital city of Nicaragua. One of the important uh, departments or state that we have in my country is the Bay Island. Why well, they are important? Because we have a lot of tourists there that come from Europe, from the United States, Canada, and from everywhere. everywhere because they are very nice and beautiful. They have white sand and turquoise water. So we have three islands. The, no the names of the this island, are the they are in the Caribbean Sea at the north of my country, Utila, Roatan, and Guanaja. The official language in Honduras is Spanish, but also we have a little English in some places. Some uh, Garifuna, they are indigenous people who live at the north coast, close to the beach population at the north coast. And at this, at this three island, the Bay Island, they just speak English. They don't speak Spanish at all. The population in my country, we are more than nine millions in all country. And the total area in square million kilometers in my country, it's more than 100,000 kilometers, which are the national symbols. So as you can see, the national flag in my country, uh, the meaning is related with Central America also. Why? Because it's talking about the two colors, the two blue lines that we have up and down means the Pacific Ocean at the south and, and the Atlantic Ocean at the north. And the five stars represent each one, one of the five countries from Central America. And the star of the center, it's Honduras. And the other four are Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. The national flower is orchid, that you can find orchids everywhere. The national bird, as you can see in the picture, is the red macaw. It's very common to see these animals, these birds, especially at the north coast. And we have in different colors and the, and the macaw. We have in red, we have in blue, we have in green. And it's very usual to have in the, your houses, in the small jails, these kind of birds. They are very popular. My parents, they have in their houses, my friends. And they are very common to have these animals in houses. 
And uh, the national tree is pine, so we have a lot of forest in my country. We have a lot of mountains, very green mountains all year long. But we don't have volcanoes. We have a lot of mountains, but no volcanoes. And about the people, we are more than 80% of the population of all my country. It's, uh, we call mestizo. I am mestizo. We are a mix between people who come from Spain when Honduras and Central America was conquered by Spain. So we are a mix between uh, people from Spain and indigenous people. And just a few, like 10% of the population, are another kind of, of ethnic. And uh, more than 50% uh, of the population in my country, uh, we are urban, we live in the urban areas at the cities, uh, but also like more than 45% of the population lives at the rural area. But something new that is starting to, to happen in my country is the people from the rural area who dedicate to the agriculture is starting to immigrate to the capital city and San Pedro Sula, the second city, in looking for better opportunities to live because in the rural areas at the mountains, they don't have too many support from the government to farm their lands. So sometimes they have to immigrate to the big cities to look for a better life, but sometimes that didn't happen when they arrived to the big cities because they don't find a job, they, can, they don't know how to write, they, they also they don't, can find a house to live. So sometimes they live in very difficult conditions when they immigrate to the big cities. And the age of the population in my country, uh, everybody, more than 50% of the population, that means like more than 5 million of people, uh, they are very young. Yeah. More than 50%, uh, they have less than 30 years old, and we have a lot of children and a lot of babies everywhere, at the rural area, at the urban area. The weather is completely different in my country because we are very close in, to the equator, so we don't have the four seasons that usually you have here. We just have two seasons in the year. We have 10 months of summer, we have a lot of sun and whole weather all year long, and we have rain for two months. So the good thing that we have like 30 or 40 Celsius degrees at the north coast, at the south coast for all year for 10 months, and between uh, 15 and 25 Celsius degrees at the capital city and the mountains. And the other two months can be in November and December every year have a lot of rain, especially at the north coast and the beaches. We have a lot of heavy rain. And each year uh, we have more and more hurricanes. The last year at November, in two weeks, we have two hurricanes. We have Eta, and after another week we have Yota. And uh, at the north coast, and we have a lot of devastation at November of the last year. So we produce usually a lot of things related with agriculture, vegetables and fruits, like bananas, coffee, tobacco, corn, sugar cane, and shrimp and lobster. And usually the final destination of all these vegetables and fruits are here, the United States or Canada, sometimes Europe. And another thing that we have, uh, as I told you before, we have a lot of forests, but that is a good thing because we have a lot of mountains. But the bad thing is because the bad agricultural practices at the rural area, because they burn forest and use wood for fuel because they cook with the wood. That, that is causing right now a depletion of forest resources. Also commercial practices of forest exploitation are not sustainable and a lot of illegal traffic of goods. So we are losing a lot of good and forest right now. And Honduras has been a democratic unitary state. It's not a federation like here or Mexico, as I told you before with power divided among uh, three branches, legislative, executive, and judiciary. And uh, the president is the head of state and government, is elected by popular vote by four years, and the National Congress is the same, is elected by popular vote for the other term for four years also. Okay, what do you have for, tourist, for tourism, touristic spots, interesting places that you can have fun, and you can go to play, and you can get the sun. Very nice to go to the Mayan ruins of Copan, uh, these ruins are located in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the mountains, and uh, they are located at the west side of Honduras, 14 kilometers from the border with Guatemala, and it's the biggest Mayan city in Central America. It's really nice to be there. And it's at the middle, as I told you before, of the forest and the wildlife there. Another touristic place that we have that uh, is very popular in Europe and in different places is Bay Island, the three insular the triage that I told you before, Roatan, Utila, and Guanaja, the insular department that we have, they are great for scuba diving, water sport, beautiful beaches with white sand and turquoise water. 
And another touristic place that we have is great beaches at the north coast. We have Tela, La Ceiba, uh, Trujillo, that we have some and weather all year long. And the national parks, if you, like, if you like forests and if you like to see animals and biological reserves. So we have a lot of national parks everywhere with tropical forests, mountains, and indigenous people, very friendly people also there. And another touristic spot that we have is colonial sites because we have the influence from Spain. We were conquered by them. So we have this kind of Spanish style architecture, small towns and church who were built by the conquerors from Spain before our independence. And what's usually what we eat in Honduras. So this, it's very common that the typical breakfast for family in the rural and urban area can be eggs with uh, tortillas, tortillas, you know, tacos. So these are tortillas made with corn and fried red beans and avocado butter and fried plantains. Green plantains are very popular. We, all, we eat them just not breakfast, usually at dinner also, uh, with red beans. We eat a lot of red beans and tortilla is very common. Eat tortilla is like eat bread. And the typical lunch, especially at the North Coast in Honduras, uh, you can see it, uh, fried, fried fish, it's very common to eat fried fish. Uh, red beans with rice, we call this casamiento, like a marriage between the red beans and the rice. Platin chips, so we eat platin chips at breakfast, lunch, at dinner, and cabbage. And uh, usually the typical dresses to dance typical music, music, especially at the Independence Day, that is September 15, uh, has the colors of the flag of Honduras. It usually has uh, blue and white. And uh, as you can see uh, in this picture, uh, we also have a lot of leather from Honduras and it's very common to see shoes for men or for women that they are from leather with different colors, but they are hand painted with different uh, pictures or images there. And it's very popular right now and in fashion right now, very trendy in Honduras. And also we have handbags uh, with the fabrics are made from indigenous people. And uh, about the typical music, what we have, Usually we dance uh, since we are at the schools because usually the typical dance in Honduras that we dance when we are at school and we are at the high school, uh, all, all these dances are related with the process of, court of courtship between men and women. So, and they are very funny and the music is, is really, really nice. <laughs> You have uh, uh, a short sample here also of uh, the modern version of punta. What is punta? Punta is a very popular dance that we have from the north coast, from Garifunas. Uh, these indigenous people, they become from Africa uh, to the north coast of Honduras. And this modern version is performed by a young orchestra uh, in Honduras. The name of the orchestra is 504. The, that is the area called of my country. And the song, the, the name of the song is Snail Soup. Is very popular and was very famous everywhere in international settings also at the age. So maybe you can think how is the average family, how are the families uh, in my country? Sometimes can be a little different from the rural area, from the urban area. Uh, the rural area, we have extended families, so we can have maybe like uh, three families in the same house. You can have the grandparents, you can have the uncles, you can have the parents, the children, both uh, the cousins, and maybe you can have more than 10 people living in the same house uh, at the rural area. And uh, the urban area is just the, like the poorest people, lives uh, like uh, more than 10 people in the same house. And uh, the middle class and the other people just have uh, the family with the mom, dad, and the children, or the teenagers, and that's it, like five people maybe in a house. Uh, usually they can have uh, two or three kids at the urban area, but at the rural area, usually the families can have seven babies, for example, eight babies, sometimes 10. They have a lot. And, uh, and the rural area, they live in very, very poor conditions. So that's why sometimes we have a, a lot of immigration from rural area to the urban area because they don't have nothing to eat. Because uh, for agriculture, they don't have uh, any kind of support from the government. So because we have a lot of sun and we have the hot weather all year, maybe their agriculture is not going to survive all year long because the weather conditions, so sometimes we have to, they have to immigrate.
to the urban area looking for something better for the kids. And also about the education, the schools in the rural area, they have different conditions, completely different conditions than the urban area. At the rural area, they just have a few schools. Sometimes they just have one teacher for the, all the elementary school. The same teacher is uh, teaching first grade, second grade, until sixth grade. All the, they have all the kids in the same room. That is very common to have in the rural area, and they don't have enough teachers, they don't have enough schools for the kids, and it's very normal at the rural area also that the kids, they don't go to the school. Maybe just can have war or second grade, because usually uh, they help uh, with the parents to get food to the house. So they have to work at the agriculture, or they help the mom to clean the house or do another things. So, because they, ha they don't have stoves at the kitchen, in the rural area, they had to look for wood to get fire and they can cook in, in, in the kitchen, in the houses, you know, the rural area. And uh, in the case of the urban area, so it's different. So you, we don't have like just one teacher for the all the race. So we have the elementary school on the urban area. So usually the average of the ages can be five, six years old. They start to go to school at the first grade when they, when, when they are six, seven, eight years old, and uh, we have six years for the primary school. After that, so we have the secondary school, three years, and uh, high school. But uh, the graduation rates from, to graduate from high school for teenagers are, is not very high right now. It's very difficult to get to them to maintain at the schools because usually the family doesn't have enough money to pay the schools to them is at the urban at the urban area. That's the problem in the rural area because they are helping to the families to get food, and the urban area because uh, they don't parents usually they don't have enough money to pay for all the children to have schools or to have the high school, so they have to leave uh, the school. That is very common. So just one percent of the population of Honduras went to the university, and the, from that one percent is just a few they can graduate from university. So it's not common to find people in my country who has a university degree. Sometimes they can go to university, but they can finish because they don't have money to continue or for another reason they can go. So we have a lot of illiterate people who can uh, write or people who can spell or who, who can read at all or who can uh, read or write very well. So that is the situation right now. And the other thing is because we have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, poor people, more than 65%, more than 5 million of the population of my country, uh, they just live with $1 uh, every day. And with $1 uh, you have to eat for um, families who have seven members. So usually they go to school in the morning, nothing to eat, they don't eat anything. That's common at the rural area and also at the urban area. So sometimes for the kids it's very difficult to go to school, not just because they can go because they don't eat anything. So in conclusion, why everything is here in, in Honduras? Ah, because we have the most beautiful beaches and we have a lot of fun and sun all year long. And because we have a great archeological site, the Copan Mayan ruins. And because we have uh, the Spanish style, the beautiful small towns, the colonial style because we have a lot of friendly and nice people everywhere, and a lot of national parks and forests with wildlife. So thank you.